Voices of Hope is a podcast of New Hope Presbyterian Church in Castle Rock, Colorado. New Hope is a church that puts people first. Our Sunday worship is on site and online at 9.30 a.m. And you can listen to our sermons and podcasts on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and any popular podcast platforms. This week, Pastor Caressa continues our series, Spirit of the Living God, with a sermon titled, Spirit, Guide Us. Scripture is read by Pastor Cressa and Pastor Jordan, and it comes from Acts 2. Friends, last week we began our Pentecost Holy Spirit journey in Acts 2, and today we continue that adventure. Acts 2 describes the event of the Holy Spirit coming upon the people in Jerusalem on that event we call Pentecost. Peter steps forward into the crowd and explains how the Holy Spirit has been present in and through the story of God even since the beginning. And then Peter explains how the Holy Spirit has been at work in and through Jesus and how the fulfillment of God's promises are now coming to fruition through the life, ministry, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And in fact, this resurrection of Jesus is the catalyst for what is happening on this Pentecost. Jesus has risen and ascended at the right hand of God. Jesus received the Holy Spirit and is now pouring out that Holy Spirit onto not only the disciples, but to all who are present, who are believers and followers of Jesus. Peter, in that moment, calls upon the crowd to repent and be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And those who heeded this call shaped and formed themselves into a Christ-centered community. Today, we listen to that sermon by Peter, and we listen for how the Spirit is at work in and through our individual lives but also through this community of believers. So Peter stood and preached to the crowds. Fellow Israelites, listen to these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man whose credentials God proved to you through miracles, wonders, and signs, which God performed through him among you. You yourselves know this. In accordance with God's established plan and foreknowledge, Jesus was betrayed. You, with the help of wicked men, had Jesus killed by nailing him to a cross. God raised him up. God freed him from death's dreadful grip, since it was impossible for death to hang on to him. This Jesus God raised up. We are all witnesses to that fact. He was exalted to God's right side and received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit. He poured out his Spirit, and you are seeing and hearing the results of of this having done so. Therefore, let all Israel know beyond question that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When the crowd heard this, they were deeply troubled. They said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? And then Peter replied, Change your hearts and lives. Each of you must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you, your children, and for all who are far away, as many as the Lord our God invites. With many other words, Peter testified to them and encouraged them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Those who accepted Peter's message were baptized. God brought about 3,000 people into the community that day. The believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings, to the community, to their shared meals, and to their prayers. A sense of awe came over everyone. God performed many wonders and signs through the apostles, and all the believers were united and shared everything. They would sell pieces of property and possessions and distribute the proceeds to everyone who needed them. Every day, they met together in the temple and ate in their homes. They shared food with gladness and simplicity. They praised God and demonstrated God's goodness to everyone. And the Lord added daily to the community those who were being saved. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. Well, friends, last week we began a journey, a journey with the Holy Spirit who is going to infuse us, guide us, be present with us, and empower us. We can't just let Pentecost be a one-time event. It is an ongoing experience of the Holy Spirit. And so we're going to spend the next couple of weeks exploring who this Holy Spirit is, how the Holy Spirit is present and at work 
within us and for us and through us. And I pray that this begins to help enlighten us into how active the Holy Spirit, the very Spirit of God is with us. So as we explore this sermon series and as we look specifically at Acts chapter 2 today, I want you to ponder this truth. Really let it resonate with you. Think about the importance of this. The Holy Spirit is the very presence of God dwelling within you. Now, I don't know about you, but that makes me go, ooh, I need to be on better behavior, don't I? Right? If that is the very presence of God dwelling within you. Now, our scripture reading today was from these kind of part two of Pentecost. And that's when um, after the Holy Spirit had come with wind and fire and infused the disciples and all that were gathered there. And everybody started speaking in different languages, which we got to experience last week. Thank you for those who participated. It was such a wonderful experience. And in fact, some of the people that were watching were like, oh, what are those crazy people doing? They must be drunk. Right. And Peter's like, no, it's nine o'clock in the morning. It's not five o'clock somewhere yet. Good. You got my joke. Thank you. I just want to make sure you're awake still. Yes. Good. Good. And, and so then Peter gets up. Okay. This is the same Peter who denied Jesus three times. This is the same Peter who went hiding when things got tough, right? I mean, and, and so here is Peter and he stands up in front of thousands of people, a Jew speaking to fellow Jews. I mean, that had to have been invoked by the Holy Spirit, right? I mean, trust me, the last thing I ever thought I would do in my life was preach. And I have the Holy Spirit to thank for the fact that I can get up before you and do this. The Holy Spirit infused Peter, and here he is preaching before everybody, and he recalls how God has fulfilled God's promises in and through Jesus. That this Jesus wasn't just some teacher. This Jesus wasn't just some guy from Galilee, from Nazareth. This is the Messiah you all have been waiting for. Don't you get it? And he continues to preach and he, he lays out from the beginning of time how Jesus is the fulfillment of God's promises and how the Holy Spirit has guided Jesus through this. This Holy Spirit is the same spirit that came and descended like a dove onto Jesus at his baptism. And from that point on, Jesus is empowered to go out, to go out and to do his ministry to teach and to heal, to exercise demons, and and to just be this God-loving present to everybody. And it was the Holy Spirit that did that for Jesus. And now Peter is saying this Pentecost event has been prompted because of Jesus' resurrection. And now not only did the Holy Spirit come upon Jesus, but now Jesus is giving you the Holy Spirit. And guess what? It's your turn. It's your turn to go out and do what Jesus did and say what Jesus said. Anybody up for the task? It's daunting if you think about it. Oh, no, no, no. That's Jesus, right? That was Jesus's thing. And he was really good at it, right? And you want, you want me, you want all of us to go out and do what Jesus did and say what Jesus said to people who are strangers? No. Peter said, yes. You see, that same spirit that came upon Jesus is the spirit that Jesus is giving you now in this moment for such a time as this. And the ministry that Jesus did is now to be lived out. It's to be continued through you. That's a pretty daunting task if you think about it. But yet we go back to that truth that the Holy Spirit is the very presence of God dwelling in us. And so Peter's sermon that day made quite an impact. We hear that 3,000 people came to believe and they were baptized. Wouldn't it be great if that happened right here and now? All right, go out there, go grab all of your friends, bring them in, right? The Spirit, the same Spirit is being enacted right now. But who is this Spirit? Well, this Spirit is not just a concept or an abstract idea. The Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity. The Holy Spirit is the third part of that Holy Trinity referred to as the advocate, the comforter, the spirit of truth. It's in and through the Holy Spirit that we receive guidance, divine guidance and wisdom and strength 
to navigate all of the complexities in our life. The Holy Spirit is God dwelling within us, empowering us to live according to God's purposes. But how? That's always been my question when it comes to the Holy Spirit. But how? And how do I know? How do I know the Holy Spirit is with me? How do I know the Holy Spirit is speaking to me? I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't really hear a big booming voice coming from heaven, do you? If you do, then I want you to come up here and share with us that experience. But if we think about it, we think God is going to come to us in these big, grandiose ways, and God can. But oftentimes, it is within those soft, gentle, quiet times that the Lord kind of whispers in our ear. The Holy Spirit is at working, saying, you really should do this. And then I go this way. And then the Holy Spirit says, told you, told you so. Go back. Why didn't you listen? So how? How does God dwell within us? How does God God's Spirit empower us? How do we know when the Holy Spirit speaks to us, teaches us, moves us, and guides us? And so one of the ways in which the Holy Spirit guides us is through Scripture. Now, you may have already known this, but I think it's a good reminder that we are to immerse ourselves in God's Word and not just to memorize a piece of Scripture. But when we come to actually reading the scripture, we're first to pray and say, God, I need you to inspire me. I need you to speak to me. But that also means that we have to be ready to receive it. We have to have a posture ready to listen and to learn and to hear. And so the Holy Spirit speaks to us and guides us through scripture. We even hear throughout all of scripture, especially in Psalm 119, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light unto my path. And if we look at this Acts, after Peter gives this robust sermon and all of these people come to believe and are are converted and baptized, and then the community starts to gather together. And one of the first things they do is they devote themselves to the apostles' teachings. Did you catch that? They devote themselves to learning and listening and sharing and, and just absorbing the apostles' teachings, which is the message and the ways of God. And everything is grounded in the Hebrew scriptures and the scriptures of the Jewish people, which we call the Old Testament. And so the people spent time reading and listening and studying. And so it makes me wonder, well, if they were doing that every single day, how am I doing at that? In my life, how am I really digging into scripture and sitting with it and listening to it? One of my favorite ways to study scripture is to do it in a group of people, right? I think one of my my favorite things to do is to not only teach Bible study, but to be in a group of people as we study, as we share, as we listen to one another's insights. And I always learn something. And it's within those group settings that I often have those aha moments. Anybody else? Right? And I hear somebody say, well, I read it and I hear it this way. And it's like, light bulb. I didn't think of it that way. And it speaks to me. Have you ever sat and you read scripture and all of a sudden you went, wow, that really speaks to what I'm going through. See, that's not just coincidence. I think that's a God incident. I don't think it's just, oh, well, that was random. No, I think the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, trying to guide every single facet of your life. And one way is through that word of God. Another way the Holy Spirit guides us is through community. On that day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit created holy community. And that holy community community emulated what Jesus and his disciples did. You see, they shared a common life. They shared a common purse. They cared for one another. They prayed for one another. They shared meals together. They embraced this holy community. And sometimes people will say, well, when you look at the Acts 2 community, it, it looks ideal. It looks unrealistic. I mean, how can a bunch of people share everything in common, and and deal with each other every day, right? And while this may seem idealistic, the truth is that this community that worships together, prays together, eats together, shares everything in common. If somebody has a need, they sell what they have and they give to another. That's how God envisions we live together. And so one way that the Holy Spirit guides us is by having us live in a community of faith 
And New Hope is a wonderful example of that, where we come together and every single person is accepted and loved and included and valued. We put people first. We have an open table that literally has a seat for everyone at the table. And we share what we have so that those in need may be provided for. You know, I found in my own life that when I ground myself and when I surround myself with a community of believers, it helps strengthen my faith. It helps me be more rooted and grounded in what I believe, and it helps me better follow in the ways and the will and the word of God. And Peter speaks to this. He says, I want you to immerse yourself in this community. I want you to be a part of a community of believers because out there is a corrupt generation, right? And what I find interesting is that this corrupt generation that Peter speaks of is not much different than the world we live in. Hundreds and thousands of years later, people are still doing what they can to have greed and power, sin and evil, to do whatever they can do to get ahead, to leave others behind. And so what I found is that we have a choice. We have a choice to surround ourselves with a community that is uplifting and loving, who wants the best for you, who wants to help you stay on that path, who wants to help be your compass towards God's ways. And then there are times when there's a community of people that want to tear you down. They want to ridicule, ridicule, manipulate, be a bad influence. And it doesn't matter if it's in work or school, neighbors, social clubs, pickleball groups, you name it. You've been in those kind of environments where you are constantly bombarded with this negative influence. And you have to think, how is this influence, how is this group, this community helping me orient my life towards Christ? It's not. And so sometimes we have to make those hard decisions to turn away from what is negative, to, from what is taking our focus away from Christ and following in the ways of God and turn towards people, towards toward a community that is loving and embracing, that is going to build you up instead of tear you down. And then the Holy Scriptures continue to say that one of the ways that the Holy Spirit guides us is by sharing in meals. Regular common meals that we get together around table. It is amazing what can happen when we just sit down around table and get to know one another. Those of you who did the Lenten series with me, Table Talk, can can attest to that. That people who did not know each other came together, sat around table, and we shared stories. We got to know each other. We listened to the scriptures. And then, of course, we're also talking about the Lord's Supper and how the grace and forgiveness and love and peace of Jesus Christ comes to us through that table. And then there's a fourth way that the Holy Spirit can guide us, and that's through prayer. Individual prayer as well as corporate prayer. I mean, it sounds simple, but if we sit and we listen, if we share with God what's going on in our lives, if we're honest and humble before God in our prayer, and we truly just sit there and listen, to be still and know, That is when the Holy Spirit can speak the loudest. And it also occurs here when we pray together, when we pray with and for and over one another, how powerful the Holy Spirit can be. How many of you have ever asked for prayers and you have literally felt the presence of others' prayers, right? You have felt, especially in your time of need, you have felt that community support, that that sense that others were praying for you and how powerful that can be. So the Holy Spirit guides us in a variety of ways. The Holy Spirit can guide us through the reading and the studying of Scripture by being in community and helping each other stay on the right path and building each other up. The Holy Spirit brings us together around a table where there's a seat for everyone. And the Holy Spirit guides us as we go to God in prayer, as we seek that guidance. Friends, the Holy Spirit is the very presence of God dwelling within you. As we journey through life, let us open our hearts to that guiding presence of the Holy Spirit. 
And as you go about this week, think about where do you need to put more time and energy into so that you can invoke the Holy Spirit. Maybe it's through that scripture and that study. Maybe it's through being in community. Maybe it is through breaking bread with others around table, or maybe it's through prayer. But my prayer for all of us is that we will listen to the Spirit's leading. We will listen and follow her voice to share in that Holy Spirit so their lives can be enriched and be aligned with who God is and who God calls us to be. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening to Voices of Hope. If you have enjoyed our podcast, please rate and review it and share it with your friends. If you want to know more about New Hope, you can subscribe to our weekly email newsletter, The Midweek Memo, by going to our website and signing up. Friends, may you love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and may you go and love your neighbor as yourself. Go in peace.